welcome to the broadcast with Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. My name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Season 3, Episode 30, Episode number 130. How's it going, ladies? 120, no? It's 130. Isn't it? Oh, 120. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, we did talk about this today. I can't remember. Did. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I, Alex has an ear infection, so I haven't slept in several nights, and I'm pretty tired. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice if it was season three, episode 30. Sorry. Season three. Yeah. No. Yeah. Season three, episode 30. Overall, episode 130. Oh my god, I can't talk. I yeah, no, we get you. We feel you. Numbers. <laughs> numbers. It would be cool. The nice um, symmetry of numbers. Can yes. you believe that we are 30 episodes into season three? Nope. Nope. That's actually <laughs> kind of crazy because I feel like we just had our third birthday party. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Did we do that? I feel like we've had a fair amount of parties. We've been yeah. um, pretty social this season so i kind of can't keep them all straight that's which true is a good problem to have we've been very very good hostesses i feel like i think so yeah that's what happens i guess when you're you're in your mid-30s or approaching your mid-30s yeah. or you don't want to go out anymore you just want to have people over exactly <laughs> <laughs> anyway speaking of birthday parties we had um alex's first birthday party this weekend Ooh. It was a uh, lot of fun. Nice. The pictures were really adorable. That kid is just like insanely photogenic. He, he is, really is. He is. And he's insanely happy all the time. Like I said, he has an ear infection right now. And it is just like with the last one. The only indication that he's sick is that he hasn't been able to really sleep well at night when he's laying down. Like Ed, every like during the day, he puts on a brave face. He's fine. They said at school he's been generally happy. Although today they said he was miserable and had a fever. And I was like, well, why didn't you call me? And they were like, it wasn't 101. We didn't want to bother you. And I was like, well, what was it? And they were like, 100.9. And I was like, <laughs> that's 101, essentially. I swear to God, that this is a true story. This really happened. She's like, well, it was 99.9. And then it was 100.7. And then it was 100.9. And then it went down to 100.2. And I was like, she's like, it was just all over the place. And I was like, but it was trending enough that you kept taking it. So <laughs> You're right. maybe you could like, I don't know, tell me. They were like, yeah, he didn't really eat much. And I was like, oh, anyway, um, he was still fine and happy, though, until he wasn't. <laughs> no. But yes, yeah, so he's super cute. And the Amanda and Shandy are referencing the pictures that they saw on our new broadcast Instagram feed that everybody should go out and follow. Yes, indeed. That is, we are the broadcasters three on Instagram. That's been super fun. It has been really fun. Yeah. So we've been taking turns posting things. Sometimes we post them at the exact same time. <laughs> it's no part of, you know, the fun of it. It is. I don't know why it took us so long to get there. Uh, you know seriously I, yeah i wish we'd always had this i know me too because it really has been very fun um <laughs> just, it's the only social media i really like instagram instagram um yeah my sister and jay are pretty much they're huge instagrammers like they were both sitting on the couch all weekend just like checking their feeds and i was like how is it possible that you know there's this must to look <laughs> on an instagram and then you know i put all those pictures up on Saturday and I was, you know, compulsively checking to see, did anybody else watch? And I'm like, well, you know, you're only <laughs> going to get a certain amount of viewers when you only have like 30 people that are following you. So, <laughs> so tell your friends, let's see if we can get to 60. Yeah. Woo. Let's double it this week. <laughs> all <And> right. <laughs> anyway. Yes, it was, it was really, really adorable. So we, we had the theme was like, you know, our little man, which, well, that wasn't really the theme, but that was like what the things were called. So the theme was just like, we give it because he's so cute that we put him in like this little bow tie and we had suspenders <laughs> and he had a number one on his shirt that said Alex. And, you know, the, so I wanted to, we want to do a red and gold theme because, you know, Valentine's Day and, and he looks, he and I both look really good in red because we've got olive skin tone. <laughs> And we just wanted to make it kind of classy. We didn't want to do like your traditional like blue or whatever. Unfortunately, they don't really make red and gold party things for little boys. So it was yeah. kind of tough to find things. So we ended up, I ended up just buying this pack of, of blue and gold on um, face on, on Facebook, on Insta, on, <laughs> on, 
<laughs> Somewhere on the internet. Somewhere on the internet. It doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> Instead of buying it on Amazon, through janejack.com slash Amazon. And I did. I paid myself, essentially, a nickel for this $17 party pack. Well, that's a bargain. It really was. Anyway, so I ended up getting that. It was like blue and gold. And then I was in Target later that week, and um, they had their Valentine's Day stuff out. And they had um, 60 plates for three three dollars each and they were like you know some sturdy plates so i was like oh my goodness could i really get 120 plates like because they had red ones and gold ones and pink ones and white ones and i was like i have to get these red and gold plates for six dollars there's so many of them so i was like super <laughs> stoked and then i'm thinking okay this th- this is kind of weird to have like you know the red and gold plates oh because then i also got cups so see this this cup i'm drinking my champagne out of <laughs> Nice, nice. I, I had the like, red and gold cups too, and I'm like, okay, this is odd because how am I going to like really reconcile these blue and gold everywhere with the red? So then I picked up a pack of just plain red balloons, and I was like, if I throw red balloons in there, every it'll it'll be great. It'll all be great. So <laughs> that's what I ended up doing. I think it worked out fairly well. So we had that, and then going back, I know, right? There's there was no point to that story other than I really like red and gold. <laughs> <laughs> that was a super long tangent but on the day of i had ordered him this so with zach with the smash cake we i didn't really realize you know how dirty you get when you're smashing cake all over yourself and face like you're you know got icing all over and it's never had it before and it like stained his little shirt that i got for his first birthday so this time i was thinking I got him a red bow tie to replace because he had the bow tie with the suspenders on the shirt already. I got him a red bow tie and I got him a little birthday crown and it was gold and red <laughs> and it had a one on it. And I thought it was like super adorable. I got it on Etsy. Um, JaneJack.com slash Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the next thing. That'll be the next. Rob, get on it. So I put him in it and he's in his black pants and I take him out and. The first thing my dad says when I see him, everyone's like, oh, he's so cute. And my dad is like, he looks like a Chippendales dancer. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. He looked like a little Chris Farley or Patrick Swayze. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> now go back and you'll never see that the same way again. <laughs> but it awesome. was really cute. <laughs> um, and it's smart. Less cleanup for you. Or like was. just easier. You just hose him down we did we just stuck him in the bathtub after that it was yeah you know it was it was it was cute it was fun overall and we had a lot of family come to town and friends come over so that was really nice jana was there she was in there i saw i know it was so that was fun um we had my birthday the day before which i don't really have any stories about except zach got me a birthday present my mom picked him up from school and they went to target and he picked out this present by himself and at least that's what they tell me i'm going to believe it <laughs> he got me a little green notebook and i was like oh thank you it goes because you love notebooks mommy it's true hey he knows you <laughs> i know that's so sweet he pays attention like a perceptive little kid yeah mm-hmm. very cute so anyway that Aww. was pretty it was pretty much all I had for the last few weeks. We rewatched A Star Is Born with like uh, Jenna and my sister, and Jay's dad was there, and um, so Kate, my sister, and Jay and I rewatched it. The other two were watching it for the first time, and that blog post that I was going to make about like you know agency within it, I kind of mm-hmm. was re like, and then I because I had done it, and then I had taken it, and then I had deleted it. I was like, eh. I don't really know, but I took notes during the movie, and I think sometime before the Oscars, I'm definitely going to finish writing that, because I had a better sense of what I wanted to say. So, cool. But I still love the movie to death, and I still think it's great. <laughs> Just saying. I still haven't seen it. I had Ditto. some commentary, though. I'm very behind on my Oscar movies this year. I really haven't seen that many. Normally, I like to be a little, little more up to speed at this point That's in the season, true. and I have not been. Because... Hmm. The only two I think I've seen are A Star is Born and Black Panther. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't even know which movies are up for, like, <laughs> okay. Oscars. Oh, I've seen Black Klansman. I've seen three. Oh, how's Black Klansman? That's one I really want to see. It's really good. 
I had nice. heard that yeah. it was very long. It has great reviews. Yeah, it, it's really good. And it's it's very it's very interesting to juxtapose, juxtapose it with what's going on in the world today, too. So I, de- mm-hmm. I won't say anything else. Yeah. You guys, you know, watch it and, and decide for yourself. But I liked it a lot. Yeah, I definitely need to watch that. I have seen Black Panther. So maybe I've seen one of the Oscar movies. Yeah. What else? Well, is- the... Um, the best picture nominees are Black Panther, mm-hmm. which we've all seen, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Roma, Green Book, A Star is Born, and Vice. I mm. want to see Vice and I want to see The Favorite because I hear The Favorite is like nutso but good nutso. Those are the only two on that list I've seen. Well, oh, I saw you're the, the one, one that uh, told Black me. Panther too. Are you the one huh? that told me? Are you the one that told me that it was like good nutso? Yes, that does sound like something I would say, and that is how I feel about that movie. So it's entirely possible that it's me. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really weird. But I just love that like the three main characters are women, and they are all so freaking good. Yeah. Like they, the three of them just like act the shit out of their characters, and it yeah, it's it's weird in in all the best ways. And like I could watch any of those ladies just like make coffee for two hours and i would probably thoroughly enjoy that film yeah. <laughs> awesome nice. oh my god we just had a farting noise we, we did it. oh my god shandy are you i didn't saying hear it so it was probably farted? me mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry did i just call you out <laughs> oh was it was he it was oh no it was no yeah no it was from amanda Oh, I mean, okay. Yeah, I was going to say I didn't hear it, so it was probably me. I didn't but actually it, fart, but it's right. A- it wasn't a fart, but it was also it corresponded with at least visually. I could see you moving in your chair. Yeah, and it was at that moment. Well, it's a, that the it's fart a, sound. It's a wood chair, so I don't know how it would fart. It's really a very uncomfortable chair. I need. But to it was like chair. a big. It was like a big move. I, I, honestly, see if I can do it again. How about now? See, guys, this is Instagram gold here. This like, we found incredible. our video. Yes, it is. Am I doing it? Am I farting sound? This is wonderful because if, if this becomes our on Instagram, then we can absolutely cut this out of the show itself and save it for the bloopers. Yeah, I wonder what I did. I mean, I definitely yeah. didn't fart. Like, if I did, I would Yeah, no, it, it definitely wasn't a fart. Okay, but, so... Yeah. So, yeah, I haven't um, seen many of those movies, but I have seen, and this is for Matt, um, for one thing, I finished Sex Education, and we didn't talk about it last time because we were on the crossover with uh, our real weird sister friends, but um, Sex Education was so fucking good. So I don't know if you guys have seen it, but that was one that was like, when I was done, I was like, what do I watch now? That was so good. And then Matt suggested Russian Doll. Which Amanda also said she was obsessed with, and I've seen it now one and a half times, and I fucking love it. I like I binged it all in one night, and then you went back and started again. So I watched it all in one night, and then um, Frank was here last weekend, and I kept saying like, "You have to watch Russian Doll. You have to watch Russian Doll." And um, so we watched like half of it together, and then didn't have time for more. But yeah, so I've seen I've seen it once and one and a half times. (laughs) Oh, Carl, you got to get on it. We really have to talk about it. I feel like it should be. An episode. It was it was that good. Yeah, okay. it was that good. And that actress too. I just like I love her so okay, much. Okay, okay. I'll I'll so which should I do first? Sex education or Russian doll? Oh Ooh. I would say Russian doll because I think it's a shorter It's faster, yeah. It's three yeah. and a half hours. Okay. It's a long movie. Okay. That's yeah. doable. Okay. Well and also I haven't seen sex education. So if you do Russian doll, we can talk about it and then you and I can do sex education and then we can talk about that. Okay, and so Sex Education education is also only eight episodes, Um, so it's not super long, but they're more like 50-minute episodes, so it's, you know... It's It's still eight hours of television, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be longer than the other, but it's so, it's so, so good. Is Jillian Anderson just, like, the most... Isn't she, like, the shit? I love her so much and everything she's done. She's really great, and her character is really interesting. Cool. That nice. uh, that right. I don't know that and the kids that. are the kids are. Oh my god! It's just so good. It's just so fucking good. Okay. Cool. All right. It. Oh, before we move on, yes. real red sister friends. I love that, and we should always call them that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Why are we real weird ever... sister friends? <laughs> real weird sister friends. I'm gonna write that down. 
Because <laughs> I want to title it the next time they're back. Yeah, that was yeah. absolutely perfect. I love it so, so much. <laughs> All right. Man, Amanda, you are on fire lately. I didn't. Shandy said it. I just I just made sure we came back to I it. I know. It you brought so us good. back. Like, you picked up on it. That's yeah. awesome. Also, guys, going back to the Instagram for a second, mm-hmm. when we're, just to let everybody know, when if you want to know who is the one that's Instagramming at the moment, we're hashtagging it, I'm with, and then our names. And that was totally also an Amanda idea. Yep. True story. You know, I may, may or may not know a few things about, you know, how to market one's brand. Yeah. Well, you definitely know a lot more than others. You do. That well, is certainly I true. You know a lot more than me. I do receive a, a paycheck for doing something adjacent. <laughs> so <laughs> if I didn't know these things, I would be in trouble. Hashtag marketing adjacent. <laughs> marketing adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Which is what I'm going to call my consulting company. Oh my God, you should do that. Can you <laughs> Hashtag, also... I called it uh, copyright. Uh, no one steal it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> marketing adjacent. Awesome. Copyright. <laughs> or marketing adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Spelling is really, really hard. Thank you. As so are where to put the comma. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh. Or Do you use letters. the Oxford comma? Do you not? <laughs> capital letters are hard too. Capital letters. Uh, I mean, they the just are, they're just so pretty. I know. We're just talking trash now. We're just we're just joking around. <laughs> or it could be my father writes exclusively in uh, all caps, like oh. handwrites in all caps. Yeah, have n- has never that, yeah. yeah have never seen that uh, that man write a lowercase letter. You know, I know a lot of problems, but he's consistent. Yeah, he is so consistent. Yeah. I encounter a lot of handwriting in my job. I'm, I'm not handwriting adjacent, but <laughs> <laughs> per se, <laughs> per se. But I do see a lot of forms that a lot of people that practice law fill out. And you would not believe how many men and women I have seen do the, uh, like, all capital thing. Huh. Like, it's not exclusive to Kanye's Twitter and Amanda's dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be fair, I also, um, I write at work in all caps, because when you write and copy, Cindy. like, via voiceover copy, yeah. I write in all caps. So sometimes I forget to switch it off cast blocks. And I, when I'm writing emails, I'm like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not shouting at you. Like, I have to go and I, like, delete it all out and rewrite it. <laughs> I think Jay-Z and Cindy writes in all caps. I think. Yeah. And she's going to listen to this and text me as soon as she hears it. But I think that she's an all caps person, too. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. There's, if you... A, I'm in a place for it. Yeah. Listeners, let us know. This is like sock, shoe, shoe, sock thing. <laughs> like, are you... Oh, my God. Colleen, have I ever told you that I realized, like, over the course of the past, like, however many months, that... I very often do your way. You know how many freaking people have come back to me and been like, you know what, actually? (laughs) I, like, had this very sure idea of myself and what I do. (laughs) And upon further examination under a microscope, I realized that I was wrong about my own self. It was a very... Profound learning experience. I kind of love how last week I was an aha moment. I (laughs) (laughs) I kind of love how last week I'm like, and my feminist evolution, it's all Shandy challenging my views. And now this week you're like, and the way I put on shoes, it's Colleen challenging my views. (laughs) I'm so glad that we can be so profound in each other's lives. Yeah, okay, to be fair, you've We're influenced learning. <laughs> you've influenced much much more than uh, my my shoe and socks style. <laughs> mm, cheers. But yeah. Hey. I still do sock, sock, shoe, shoe. But that's always? only because always, but that's only because my socks live in a different room from my shoes. Doesn't everybody's? Well, my socks and shoes live in the same room. Yeah, see, because apartment living so like them- I yeah, my shoes don't go on until right before I leave the house. Same. I just bring my socks over to the door. But also, I have a fear of slipping. <laughs> <laughs> I just, because, well, because I also, like, just the way I wear my pants with the socks, I feel like the yeah. socks have to go on before the pants can go on. Depending on the pants, yes. Yeah. Depending on the pants, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. For sure. 
Yeah, yeah so but usually, like for, you know. there's some lag time in between the socks and the shoes. You know, but I, I'll I'll check back in the spring. Maybe okay. in the spring they'll be. Yeah. If yeah. I because I wear a lot of I don't like I either don't wear socks or anything like to work because the majority of my sock wearing is to go work out. But if I'm putting on like knee high stockings to go underneath like my clothing, then there are times if it is tighter pants, I will have to put them on beforehand and then. Mm-hmm. But I'll do it like I'll I don't know I still I don't like it. <laughs> it just doesn't well, feel right. <laughs> yes, I will definitely say it depends on the outfit sometimes and depends on the shoes yes. and like the purpose of the shoes. Yes, are you going to work out? Are you? Yeah. Yeah. If I, yeah. Good yeah. Times. Anyway, it's. So, anyway, let yeah. us know if you are caps <laughs> lowercase or caps caps. We definitely need to know this. <laughs> or. And this bothers me, even though I do have one or two dear friends who do it. So I hope they're not listening. It really bothers me when people don't use capitals ever at all. Yeah. That's a very social media thing. I feel like social media has made that acceptable. And it's really not. Um, Just like, yeah, it's like, I know you're going for a style. And you are stylish. These people, I love that they're just wonderful people. And they are very cool. But, like, you don't, like, mm, no. Well, and I find that interesting because uh, Ruby Cora, her book is mostly all lowercase. Yeah, but that's an artistic choice. That's not. Yeah. Yeah. But arguably, isn't that what these people are doing? If they are, like, artistic people, aren't they making a choice? No, there's nothing artistic. I would imagine that's how they're thinking about it, though. Grammar. No, they're not. (laughs) I'm telling you right now. If they're just using grammar in a sentence, they're being fucking lazy. Or they just don't know that words like to, from, like, shouldn't be capitalized. There are words in the English language and get lowercase no matter what, even when they're in titles. Grammar, well, wait, we're people. talking about people that are lowercasing all the way across the board, though. That's Yeah, true. but I think you can, <laughs> that you can apply it both ways. All the, all the above are not doing it right. Yeah. Right. No, okay. and I do, like, I see your point, Amanda, but I, I feel like if it's... um. If it's like a poet or a poetess in a book of poetry, then that, that is sort of like an artistic choice that like the visual of that. But if it's, I'm sorry, if it's an Instagram post, just, just like write like a normal person. Yeah. Well, and I do well, wonder sometimes when I see that sometimes, like from a person who's not like a poet or whatever, when I see that sometimes I do wonder like, would this person write what? like this in an email? Honestly, would they write like this on okay. like a uh, homework assignment that would they would have to turn in? I I I think <laughs> yes, yes. Honestly, I do. The think one with the glasses in front. Okay, thank you, thank you. I think that social media has made people more lazy in this terms because there are because ta- okay, you double space on your phone when you're typing and the period automatically goes in or and then you know it automatically capitalizes. Yeah. yeah, I do not double space to do the period. I, I like so much. I, I always didn't know they put. The- no, why would I? Why would I stop? Change the screen, put the period in. If I could just hit space, space, and it would just go in for me. That's what she said, yeah. Matt. Mm. <laughs> so then, how do you guys feel about like texting and whether or not you put punctuation in text? I'm the, I'm okay with that. Like I personally sometimes do it and sometimes don't, and most of the times, like if I write like a, a text message that has a couple of sentences. This is my own like craziness and yeah. probably is annoying to other people. But like if it's like two sentences, I will put the period after the first sentence. But after the second sentence, chances are I'm going to put like a smiling face or some other emoji You're to right. emote how I'm feeling. And I won't put a period in yeah, the emoji. It just looks weird. It just looks yeah, weird. And I kind of feel like that's like a giant period. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm yeah. Okay with well, and I feel like people I mean, are a little weird about the period at the very case. end of a text message. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Kyle. I was making a period joke. Giant period. Yes, a giant period. <laughs> giant period and not the kind that started today. No. Uh, Amanda had something relevant to say to the conversation, not smart assy like me, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, it's so relevant. <laughs> no, I was just saying that I had read I can't even remember where I read the article, but that like apparently when you when you do just that, if you like put the second period at the end of a text message, that that's supposed that's like not cool. 
that like current texting culture is such that you drop the punctuation at the end unless it is a question. Oh, interesting. That like you're evoking that you are angry or very aggressive. aggressive. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, I'm not mad, period. So essentially what you're saying is we need Emily Post to write an etiquette on texting and social media writing book. I think we do. I think we really need that. I think I need that. I think as soon as it is published, it would be obsolete probably though. Probably. (laughs) It's a very she publish it exercise. in 280 yeah. characters or less. <laughs> right. It's, it's just a Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> moving on. If we didn't you guys should, you know, check out our Instagram. We're great. <laughs> at the Broadcasters 3. We also have a Twitter, at the Broadcast 3. Because Broadcasters 3 was too long. Because fuck you, Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will um, try to occasionally go on the Twitter one. I forgot about that. Um, but I think I mentioned before, I took Twitter off of my phone. Maybe I didn't mention that. You have said that before. Okay. And uh, basically, I never use it anymore. I also, as of yesterday, took Facebook off my phone. Ooh. Well Ooh. done, you. Thank That's you. I've never move. ventured into this territory before. I'm one day in. Uh, <laughs> so check back next week no but i kind of i kind of like it like uh i'm definitely one of those people that i check facebook not necessarily the first thing i do in the morning but like within the first hour i'm up i check facebook and i realized this morning that like you know hours had gone by until i finally checked it and then i checked my facebook and there were like i had like four notifications three of which were completely you know like you know, like the stupid notifications that it's just mm-hmm. sometimes it's just for like any old thing and like one message and that was it. So, There's no reason that I needed to see this earlier. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. It's cool. great. Good for you. I did. I did keep the messenger though. So okay. I was going to say, I was going to say, we talk to you on messenger all the time. Yes. <laughs> That's fair. It, it is. It's, it's for business. well it's for business and pleasure but sometimes the facebook is for did you also realize that you liked your friends a whole lot more for several hours more than usual (laughs) (laughs) just wondering asking for a friend (laughs) you're asking for your friends (laughs) (laughs) anyways (sighs) I had an article that I wanted to talk about real quick, but I think, Shandy, you had it before we do that. You had an update about the cat box. Mm-hmm. Did you want yeah. to do that? Yeah. Um, cat box saga continues. So, <laughs> I mean, it's just nasty, honestly. It's just so gross. So finally, over the weekend, I physically took it out and That's put back said. the... <laughs> I put back the other litter boxes, which Frank insisted on keeping just in case. And I'm so glad that he did because m- my attitude was always like, we're done with this. Don't need any more. Get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of it. Yep. And he's much more of a pack rat. So in this instance, thank you. I'm glad for that. Um, so we set those up. Uh, everything's back to our OG situation with the litter boxes. But when we then actually cleaned out the, the, automatic litter box it was just it was so gross there's just there's you like had it for like two weeks yeah but there was like fucking like poop everywhere because the little comb thing that combed the poop mm-hmm. um <laughs> the little like tracks that it, that the little thing was on to move on either side like there's just like shit in there just like literal poop so oh, it's like, even between. if the thing would have worked properly, there would have still just been crap in there. And the only way really to clean that is you have to kind of like just take everything out and you have to like remove all the litter because otherwise, how are you cleaning this thing like with soap and water? But then that's getting down into your cat. Lit- you know, it's just like this whole mess. So finally, we just packed it up um, and took it back. And... On the receipt, it said that they take it back for any reason within 60 days of purchase. So there you go. So 
you had told us you guys had, you know, got this because it was on sale. Do you think that maybe now you know why it was on sale? <laughs> <laughs> Very fair question. But it's it's just interesting because as we discussed on the crossover, uh, basically everyone who has had one of these has not been super excited about it. So, right. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Prong still kind of wanna, wants to look into the possibility of if there's like a better model, if like maybe if uh, we get one of the more expensive ones, would that work better? And I'm fine to look into that, but like later. Right. Just let, we'll just like kick that can down the road a little bit and uh, yeah. Hashtag so, too soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amanda, it's an incredibly how- good idea. Just not. Yeah. You know, no. Amanda, how has your last two weeks been? I watched Russian Doll. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I was like, I was thinking about it today. I was like trying to think of like, oh gosh, what am I going to talk about? And it's all like media content. Like I really got caught up on stuff like yeah. at Russian Doll, which I, I will save uh, for when we can actually have a real discussion about it. But freaking loved it um i saw mary poppins returns finally oh yeah what'd you think i thought it was cute but and i'm sure other people have probably said this but it felt like mary poppins by numbers yeah i like the meryl streep song the best yeah but i feel like everything it's like they took the original movie and they just like broke it down into a formula and then they just replicated it with like a new story so it was like this was like the super expialidocious part and like this was like you know the the uncle on the roof like that was like the meryl streep thing and like sorry spoilers no no but like it all just like this was like the feed the bird song this was like the you know step Um, in time so it just it felt a little yeah i don't know i can't tell if that was clever or lazy yeah um (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, and I feel like there was something else I watched that I really liked, and I can't think of it. Come back to it, because I was going to talk about something at the very end, because it's not anything important, and it can go like from any week that we've got. So if you think of it, just shout it out. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> um, all right, so I had found this article, and it was call- it's from Huffington Post by Danielle Gonzalez. The most popular sex toys according to the city you live in, right? So I was like, ooh, let me click on this because this sounds like it's got broadcast promise. <laughs> um, uh, so this website, a popular sex toy reseller, retailer called Love Honey, just launched an interactive sex map of the of 250 United States cities that it's like their preferred sex toys, like role play scenario and top selling products. So I guess they just took all their data and, you know, figured out like where it was like by, by demographics and decided to post it online. Um, The top 10 sexiest cities in the United States, according to them, uh, would you like to know what the number one sexiest city is? Does anybody Albuquerque, New Mexico. Shannon, you have a guess? <laughs> no, I do Sorry, do, do that again. I totally stepped all over your joke. No, you Do it again. You we can edit it out. No, you absolutely didn't step on my joke. That was actually perfect because what I'm about to tell you is the answer is Morgantown, West Virginia. Ooh, it just sounds huh. sexy. Didn't see that coming, but it is a uh, university town, no? Mm. Oh, was it really? What is university? It? University of West Virginia? I mean, is that where that is? Okay, I was gonna say, isn't West Virginia like you know, yay big? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Well, I guess that's probably why it's the sexiest city. Those college kids don't have a whole lot to do; they like to buy dildos and shit. So, <laughs> it ranked number one in multiple categories, including vibrators, butt plugs, and bondage. Oh my! Nice. The top, the next of the top ten were Boulder, Colorado, Salt Lake City, Utah, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Uh, Bozeman, Montana. Bozeman? That's where the our real weird sister friends are from. Oh, I thought oh. you were going to be like, Bozeman? That's where I bought my first vibrator from. <laughs> that's where my butt plug came from. <laughs> I bought my first vibrator in Paris, so sorry. That's not on this no. list of U.S. cities. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, hashtag humble brag. 
Uh, hashtag she's worldly. Hashtag elitist. Hashtag elite Quite the liberal. Cosmopolitan. <laughs> hashtag why does it gotta be ma- why does it gotta be Paris? Hashtag why can't you get in America? Hashtag support our economy. Hashtag <laughs> Shandy hates America. We're like two hashtags away from mega. <laughs> hashtag be bold. <laughs> Mava. Mava. Make no wait. No, make vibrators American again. Make vibrators American again. So Mava. I know we'll workshop it. <laughs> no, buy American vibrators again. So it'd be Bav. Bav. Oh. Bava. Bava. Well, at least that makes sense. Bava. That's how you would actually structure a word. <laughs> That's good. It's kind of like how if I had a daughter, I wanted to give her the initials Vag, but it didn't work <laughs> out. <laughs> um, come on, it would have been really funny. Yeah. It would have been great. Yeah, I think her, you know, teen years might have been a little uncomfortable, but yeah, especially with the name. They're Glass uncomfortable Walter. for everybody. <laughs> yes, once right. she got to like twenty five, thirty, she would have owned it. Yeah. Or she would okay. be in therapy. <laughs> her parents, my mother, and then she, and then she would own it. Yes, <laughs> so maybe like thirty-five, thirty-five. She would 35, own it. She'd yeah. be like, "Man, my yeah. parents." Yeah. She'd be like thinking. thirty-five. That was the year my mom kind of had it together, sort of. <laughs> I got it now. Anyway, okay. Number six is Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, then uh, Mont Montpelier, Vermont. Minneapolis. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. That eight was Minneapolis, Minnesota. Nine was Orlando, mm. Florida, and ten was Dayton, huh. Ohio. Huh. Cool. Did not see most of those coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you said. <laughs> Man, we underestimate. I think a lot. How of is San Francisco not on that list? I well, may, maybe maybe people in San Francisco do not shop at Love Honey. Love Honey Six. Because huh. this was just their data, like from their right their sample. Okay. Because I did think of that, too. Also, can we just pause for Salt Lake City? That doesn't surprise oh. me at all. I feel like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of repressed uh, online purchases, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> repressed it online doesn't surprise me at all. And Sundance. It's just like... It's true. And Sundance. <laughs> Aaron um. comes up to the mountains, watches the movies, bangs it out. Mm-hmm. It's great. So some of the ways, some of the things that they, you know, kind of broke it down, like, uh, was based on some of the, so like, for example, uh, Miami, Florida was 11th, right? And they ranked their most popular thing that was bought in Miami, Florida was the lifelike lover, classic, realistic dildo, six inch vibrator. And I mean, it looks, you know, it looks like a penis. It's pretty <laughs> realistic looking. Uh, another do. one. So here's San Francisco ranked 93rd what? and they uh, got, so the, this one was the, the, the one I just mentioned was the lifelike lover classic realistic dildo vibrator. San Francisco was slightly different. They liked the lifelike lover classic, uh, just realistic dildo, six inches, no vibrator part, no brighter. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So uh, Chicago was 174th, and they got the, the, I guess, the thing that was the biggest seller there was the Love Honey Bionic Bullet 5-function vibrating cock ring, worth oh. noting. Okay, Houston, Texas has this crazy, I'll send you this link, you guys want to look at these pictures, because they're pictures of each one. It's the uh, <laughs> Love Honey Mega Mighty 3 Extra Inches Clear Penis Extender with Ball Loop, and it, like... He's a fucking looks like a glass penis. It looks a penis like... extender. Mm-hmm. Like the vagina is a finite, you know, it, it cavity. sure is. Like... I'm so I'm not sure. <laughs> Sometimes you just is. you know just doesn't reach. Well, okay, fine. You're gonna make me click on it. I will. <laughs> How dare you? Oh darn. By the way, when I clicked on this, track dot web gains was the link that it went to. So. I just totally, totally got like counted as somebody that was looking for this. 
<laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, putting Raleigh on the map. Putting well, Raleigh. I'm doing my up best. The, the rankings. I am doing my best. So the mega penis, mega mighty penis extender adds up to three inches to your dong and a little partner pleasuring texture along the way. It does look textured. The snug sleeve and ball loop keeps everything in place to, and desensitizes your own pecker to prolong play times. So I'm still not sure how it works. There is a video. <laughs> there, Oh, there's a video. Okay, so you just like slide it over your dick and it just extends it by three inches. It's probably for the people that feel that... Three inches is like kind of a lot. That like they, a on lot. the picture... It has it arms. On the picture, there is definitely like, you know, you. I mean, you could see it. So maybe it's for people that are like slightly under average. Anyway, so yes, Memphis, Los Angeles, if anybody wants to know, the Los Angeles likes the uh, uh, bullet vibrator. New York is 248th. Uh, they like the 50 Shades of Grey Greedy Girl <laughs> Rechargeable G-Spot Rabbit Vibrator. That is so sex in the city. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so I didn't see my city, so I decided to check out the map. And here's where this was actually the point of what all this was. So I went to put in my city, right? How sexy is your city? And it actually wouldn't let me get to the results without filling out a survey. So ah, now mm. this is where we come in, ladies. Okay. So you guys are okay. going to help me find my per. So it wants me to find my perfect city to live in. So I think I've got to like fill out what I'm looking for so they can, you know, mm -hmm. get my data. And right. <laughs> then they're going to tell me what Raleigh is. And I really want to know. So let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why don't I put the link to this in the show no in our in our chat? If you guys want to just follow along, and then I'll, okay. I'll give you the link to the original article, like the actual Washington Post article too. But I'm going to give you the link to the quiz first. Okay, that was you guys. Oh my god, how embarrassing would it be if I had sent that link to find <laughs> <laughs> to the wrong like, chat in the chat with the guys? Yeah. Right. Well, then I'd be like, well, I just thought that maybe, you know, you'd want to copy us and talk I about it. I just thought, you know, this would be useful for everyone. Yeah. I just, uh, we wanted to help, you know, camaraderie. We wanted, you you compare sex toys with our preferences. I mean, what could go wrong? <laughs> All right. Find your perfect city. Vibrators. So the choices are not for me. Don't mind it. Yes, please. I think we're going with yes, please. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Butt plugs. Not for me. Don't mind it. Yes, please. I feel like there should be a fourth option. Um, which would be? Which would be like, I don't know, maybe someday. Not really into it right now. Not opposed. So it's let's. Just, do... I feel like it's too finite. Okay. Well, I would say I would me. say I'm out. Yeah, yeah, not for me. Bond... If those are the only options that I have, that but... is bondage. Not for me. Don't mind it. Yes, please. Hmm. Okay. Let's say don't mind it because Shandy is <laughs> is giving us giving us some things. And sure, why not? Strap-ons, you know the choices. <laughs> <laughs> they don't change. I mean, if I was asked to, that's also where I feel like, I mean, personally, like, pass. But if I was asked to. Not I for would, me, for the sake of time. I would oblige. Right. Role play. <laughs> but this is for you. This is all about you. So not your thing. Let's just say not for me. Role play. Yes, please. Don't mind it. Not for me. Yes, please. Ooh, it's fun. All right, yeah. let's do it. By the way, just scroll down to the bottom of this and it says your recently viewed items and the fucking clear penises on it. <laughs> that was so fast. It showed up so quickly. Show me my soulmate city. My city soulmate. According to this. Oh, man, it doesn't even do it. Fuck, this thing is stupid. Oh, man. It like flashed briefly and then it like redirected like you know, to the track dot, whatever. I'm going to work on getting these results back. But in the meantime, let's move to some <laughs> feedback. <laughs> oh, in the meantime, oh. I remember what the other thing was that I wanted oh, to talk oh. about. Again, this is super not exciting. But um, Daniel and I watched the Black Mirror Bandersnatch over the weekend. Oh, how did you like it? The uh, Choose Your Own Adventure movie. Oh, it yeah. was really freaking cool. Awesome. Yeah, I really, I really recommend it. I think it's just, it was like super cool, really innovative. And like, it's very interesting how they kind of really the whole concept is playing with 
self-control and like what we have control over. And it gets really Mm. meta in terms of like the characters start being aware that like someone else is making decisions. But then like I started to get aware that like the movie was forcing you into certain decisions Interesting. that even when you made a decision, it would like switch around the other way or it would keep coming back to the same question where you're like, Oh, Oh, it, it's going to go this way. And regardless of what I do, and uh-huh. it's yeah, it was just like, a, especially to pair it with Russian doll, which also kind of plays off the similar things of like, you know, who has control and uh, being on a loop and, uh-huh programming and universes Mm. and parallel timelines. It was just like, it was a really interesting cocktail of uh, Netflix enjoyment. So if you have not seen either, I recommend watching them as a pair. It's, it was uh, really a great viewing experience. Cause so my thing with black mirror is Frank is like obsessed with it and he's had me watch a couple of episodes, but like, it's too dark for me. It's just like, Oh, it's super dark. Yeah, right, like I, I, I get that it like it makes you think about really interesting things and concepts, and I can appreciate that. But if they always go to a really dark place, like it's just too much for me. So I can't. I've like haven't watched it really since like the sort of you know couple episodes that he was like, oh, you have to watch this. Um, but that one, because of the different format, I would be intrigued to try out but is it also just so oh it's super dark it is super yeah. dark i <laughs> we did it again like um i came home last night and and daniel was watching again like uh-huh. trying to find some of the other storylines yeah. uh-huh. and i think there i think we found one that was positive but even in that it was still really dark <laughs> Oh. So, yeah. it's just pretty dark across the board so if it's not your thing I, yeah okay but I would encourage you to try it just for like the the format and the like coolness factor and then maybe just don't go all the way through. Yeah. yeah. Like bail out when it starts getting a little intense. Yeah. I I also couldn't I we did the first season of Black Mirror and I too was like, man, <laughs> this is uh <laughs> this is intense. Yeah, super intense. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Okay. A lot. So I can't get this to like stay on the screen that gives you the results, but I keep seeing like Dayton, Ohio, I think is what is our match. Oh, cool. (laughs) So that's cool, I guess. All right, cool. So now we know what to do if we ever go to Dayton, buy some (laughs) vibrators and do some role play. (laughs) Choose your own adventure. Just like, just like Black Mirror. Just like Black Mirror. (laughs) Um, Do we want to get into some feedback? Yeah. All right. We'll start with the farting in your fizzy back. Um, and this was re a corn maze for your ears. So that was a two episodes ago. Ro shared a link with us that was in regards to my resolution to stop cussing so much. And she said, swearing is actually a sign of more intelligence, not less, scientists say. And that is from ScienceAlert.com. Uh, the use of obscene or taboo language or swearing, as it's more commonly known, is often seen as a sign that the speaker lacks vocabulary, cannot express themselves in a less offensive way, or even lacks intelligence. Studies have shown, however, that swearing may in fact display a more, rather than less, intelligent uh, use of language. While swearing can hmm. become a habit, we choose to swear in different contexts and for different purposes. Linguistic effect to convey emotion for laughs or perhaps even to be deliberately nasty. Uh, yeah, study- nasty women. Nasty women right here. A study by a psychiatrist, <laughs> psychologist from Marist College, Holla, found oh, hey. nice. between uh, <laughs> how fluent a person in English is in English language and how fluent they are in swearing. Um, people with greater language skills can generally think of many of more examples in the allotted time. Oh, I'm sorry, the former verbal. I scrolled down and missed a paragraph. <laughs> former verbal fluency can be measured by asking volunteers to think of as many words beginning with a certain letter of the alphabet as they can in one minute people with greater language skills can generally think of more examples in a lot of time based on this approach researchers created the swearing fluency task oh my god this test it requires volunteers to list as many swear words as they can think of in one minute hmm. okay i feel like we need to do this on the next live episode okay because this right. sounds like fun by comparing the scores from both of the tests, it was found that people who scored the highest on the verbal fluency test also tended to do the best on the swearing fluency task. Test. Task. Le. Anyway, so whatever. People that swear are smart. The end. 
<laughs> Thank you, Ro. I'm still I I've already dropped a couple of f bombs today, but I'm I've got to go back to f- Forkin. <laughs> nice, I love it. Uh, Matt says uh, another for your book pile, educated by ter- educated by Tara Westover. It's a memoir about her life growing up with survivalist parents who didn't believe in modern medicine and often believed in conspiracy theories involving the Illuminati. Harrowing mm. story. I imagine it can get under your skin. Mm, Thank good. you. I will yeah. link to that in the show notes. JP says the food that I always purposely prepare wrong mm-hmm. is a package of ramen noodles. I boil the noodles in water per the instructions, but don't add the soup mix yet. Uh, strain the water from the noodles, then put the noodles in the bowl, mix some butter into the noodles, then sprinkle in the soup packet and, mm, and mix. Mm. Uh, also, if you have extra time, ex- if you have the time, the extra step after you mix is put everything to a frying pan and sizzle for a few minutes. Stir fry a la JP. I Dude. have heard that, actually, to stir-fry ramen noodles. That sounds awesome. JP, you've, you've raised the game. Seriously. <laughs> and he's ramen noodling right. Um, and then, okay, so Matt, Greg, Desiree, <laughs> pretty much everybody in the freaking forking world knew the scene I was describing from a movie that it is take so trolls was actually one of the things I remember to this day seeing in the TV guide, not trolls too though. So when I looked up trolls back when I was in like I don't know college or maybe like thirty, when I was still thinking about it and trying to figure it out, uh, troll the description of the movie trolls didn't match it. So now I know it was trolls too. I didn't go that far. <laughs> well, trolls too and troll and trolls are completely like separate things like trolls t- there is no trolls one to trolls two sorry so troll instead of troll yeah, yeah that may be why i don't know yeah trolls two like the, it, it's like its own thing it's like in the the like bible of like the worst movies ever made it's it's like huh. ridiculous it is absolutely crazy yeah dude pisses on his dinner table <laughs> um so thank you to everyone that let me know because <laughs> that would 20 20 year plaguing so thank you 25 years of plaguing me literally thank you (laughs) and uh i guess uh the crossover some feedback from our crossover uh janice says uh to shandy i also purchased an automatic cat cleaning litter box it was loud and required just as much work so now i use the regular litter box and her cat is 18 so i think she's with you and now yeah. we've got, I guess we will finish this section with, that's what she said. I don't know. It's our second one. I want to keep that in there. It started off on a real high note. The first couple of days were life-changing and wonderful. <laughs> Maybe every two days. You really have to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to use double A ber- berries. Start you have to use eight AA batteries, and they recommend that you put the batteries in in case of a power outage. <laughs> Hashtag <Jesus>. vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag cannot read. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag world's biggest vibrator to require eight batteries. Right. <laughs> Hashtag the power actually did go out one night during the time that we had the cat, the automatic cat litter box, and I had not put the eight AAA double a batteries in well oh, apparently no. it didn't make a difference <laughs> right i it wonder why there was way. poo all in it yeah. <laughs> all on the sides it's not. Oh. oh bad joke i know but still <laughs> shitty joke would you say shitty joke it was a sh- no i wouldn't even i wouldn't even give it the the uh reward of a punny compliment <laughs> everything is a punny compliment She's a sp- she's a sp- ugh. <laughs> okay. she's a spry <laughs> she's a sp- <laughs> she's a spry smart girl she can do it I think it'd be best to do them all in one day <laughs> We were way in the back, and we were doing a lot of craning to see. I also thought Nicholas Lamel, uh, Nicholas Lamel was going to have a bigger part. I was a little bummed that there wasn't more of him. <laughs> oh my God, there's going to be more. 
There's going to be five. <laughs> I make no guarantee on contact. <laughs> is this me next? <laughs> when does that come out? Shani has done two of these. <laughs> There's some interesting places to go. For the sake of time, I think we're going to just stop there. <laughs> That's my trick for still enjoying it. Oh, <laughs> Those pair together very nicely. <laughs> oh, We're only at like four. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Numbers. Mm-hmm. We're only at like six or 400 people who are going to come out. <laughs> I don't want a boomer. <laughs> we have a long ways to go. If I get one of those things, I'll be happy. Younger, diverse, I'll take one. (laughs) It happened in church. I have been going through some boxes. You did a really good job on this, Greg. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was going to be three dads. They're just doing the two of them. (laughs) You're sitting together and doing it separately on your phone. (laughs) Great couples activity. (laughs) Oh, that was really good. <laughs> All right. So that was a lot of me talking. Um, I think it's time to let other people talk. So let's hear what some of the listeners have to say. And we'll start with one of our favorite, all-time favorite feedbackers. And that would be Desiree and Astrid. Is it Des and Astrid on this one? <laughs> let's find out. Hey, Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. This is Des. And Astrid. And Astrid. (laughs) Yes. Um, So we were just calling in to talk about food that people, you know, make wrong. (laughs) Um, My husband, uh, that nasty fucker. Um, My husband, (laughs) when he makes ramen, you know, like a packet of ramen, you know, the 10 cent ramen packet. Anyways, he makes the ramen, he cooks the noodles, and then he drains all the liquid out. Just puts the noodles in a bowl along with the seasoning packet and mayonnaise, like a lot of mayonnaise. And that's, he mixed that up. And that's how he eats ramen. And it grosses me out so much that he's not allowed to make it when I'm around. (laughs) He's so weird. I don't know why he's so he does it. He's so weird, yes. <laughs> um, dun, dun, dun! All right. Thank you for that loudness. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's all we got right now. Uh, we're a little um, slap happy right now. So we've done this about 20 times because somebody won't cooperate <laughs> and keeps doing silly stuff. So. It, it may be me. It may not. Um, anyways, um, uh, uh, love you guys. Love the show. Hopefully see you in Raleigh this year. Um, we're going to make an effort to uh, make it there, but like it depends because I may be starting a job soon, so that may go into Amanda and Shandy's house. No, Amanda lives in New York, and Shandy lives in California, but we can go to Colleen's house and see every all three of them. You want to do that? Yes? Okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll make an effort. We'll see. It depends on, you know, this job that's starting up. If I am if I start this job, I may not be able to take off time. And, you know, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Going to try, going to try, because, you know, I, I need to get out and see some of my, uh, some of my friends, some of my not here friends, <laughs> some of my cool friends. <laughs> uh, anyways, love you guys. Love the show. Talk to you later. Bye. Oh my goodness. I, okay. So just, I guess we'll extend the invitation. Um, so the, the Raleigh podcast weekend, if anybody's a new listener is that everybody gets together and hangs out that listens to the show, our show or any of the shows on the Jane Jack network network, man, I always do that. Our <laughs> show or any of the shows on the Jane Jack network in general. This year, the weekend is uh, May 3rd through May 6th. We do things on Friday night. We do things all day Saturday. We do things all day Sunday, literally all day Sunday. And I think most people leave on Monday. Uh, There's a hotel that everybody books. So if you are interested in that, you can always join, uh, say something in Facebook group, or you can send us an email and we will point you in the right direction. But yeah, uh, if you want to meet Des and Astrid, 
now's your chance. Yeah. Hopefully. Yay. Not Yay. Also, good also, luck with job. <laughs> mayonnaise is disgusting. Can we just talk about that for a second? Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. I totally buried the lead. I love mayonnaise. Duke's, Duke's mayonnaise is down here. It's okay. It's so different than all mayonnaise. And it feels like all of our listeners seem to have some kind of ramen recipe. So I feel like we should compile yes. them and then publish a ramen, the broadcaster's ramen, wrong way ramen cookbook. I like it. Oh, my God. I actually love it. Yeah, yeah so I do, too. I think that's a really great uh, thing for the store. I yeah. think we should get on that. Yeah. We should do that. I mean, we could publish it, you know, self-publish it, or we could, like, publish it in 240 <laughs> tweets or less, like, characters or less over Twitter. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Tell us your ramen recipe. Yeah. Please. Yeah. yeah. We want your ramen done wrong. And yep. we're going to do that. That's going to be totally a thing. That'd be so yeah. awesome. Oh, I love it. Yes. All right. Uh, moving on. We have another voicemail uh from mike uh hello ladies uh you may have seen my uh campaign to become abroad this week michael uh quickly uh my qualification uh many haikus many emails i promote the show both on instagram and twitter uh you know years of friendship colleen uh <laughs> oh i started the great friend zone debate of course yeah. i think i have great. more qualifications yeah. than Matt, uh, 10 things list guy. Uh, Matt Therese, he does have his, uh, you know, that's what she said. Jay impregnated Colleen multiple times. Makes sense. All right, I can give it to them, but. Only three. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? If you uh, support my cause, please go to change.org and help me out here and uh, convince the broad to let me be abroad. That would be amazing. I would be honored. I will even help them with their Instagram posts and help them learn how to crop photos and screen cap. All right, that's all I have, ladies. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, good luck, Andy. I hope you had sex this week. Goodbye. <laughs> but there's a coda. There's a coda to this voicemail. And while it's loading, and I did start this loading when we started playing the other one, so I'm not quite sure why it's not loaded yet. But vamping, vamping. Um... <laughs> Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Sorry, I forgot one of my uh, contributions. I also contributed the amazing beer koozies, the fuck you, Trump, you fucking fuck beer koozies. This is true. Maybe the greatest things ever. Uh, so I, I feel like that should be added to my list of contributions to the show. And uh, I, you know, I hope uh, you'll consider me as a, as a broad in the future. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm looking at uh, change.org right now under his Make Michael an Official Broad, and so far three people have signed. Is it Mike in his, like, fake names? Is it, like, <laughs> is it Red Mike and then Run Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually sure who the people are, um, but one of them is Dan, because he made a comment. So. No way. No way. Okay, so if anybody is it, uh, didn't follow that from the voicemail, uh, Mike would like to become a broad. He'd like to be an honorary broad. And he is making his case. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Do check it out. If you agree, give him a signature. I will put, I swear, I will put the, I will put this change. There's like, there is actually a change.org petition to make Mike Lundgren abroad. And, uh, Two have signed. It says two have signed. Shandy, one just went away. Oh, oh no. Three. Oh, that's sad. Oh, now it's three. It's so weird. Um, but yeah, Dan is one of them. Uh, <laughs> and it, his comment is, I believe in the struggle that Mike, an oppressed straight white upper middle class male, is going through. As he fights for a better future for all of us. Baby, it may be cold outside, but being around... <laughs> The warmth that is the great, hashtag greatest broad. Mike casts about with his radiant presence. Uh, Mike casts about with his radiant presence is enough to melt the heart of the universe itself. <laughs> um, okay, so if you feel like the haikus, which he did actually send us a haiku that I am going to put on our Instagram this week. 
Uh, he sent us a haiku and a uh, graphic to go along with the haiku for our Instagram. So I will put the change.org link on our Instagram, but I think I don't think it like links in the actual Instagram post. I'll do that. I will put it on the Facebook page when I put the show notes uh, when I post the link to the shows. I will put it um, in the show notes itself. So if you think that Mike, the haiku writer, the friendship zone instigator, uh, and the koozie buyer should, should be an honorary broad, then sign the petition. <laughs> uh, also, Matt, the 10 things, guys. We haven't had a top 10 list from Matt in so long, and I oh really God, need true. one. That's true. I need it. Matt, we're... We're like in our thirties of season three, so we're mm-hmm. needy and we need things, but we're also self confident because we've got it together now, and yep. we just want one. Yep, we'll have you over. We'll make you a nice dinner. Yeah, yep. We we'll know maybe we play some games. I'll and buy. All you- we're asking for is a is a list. Yeah, I'll buy you a beer that's not an IPA because you can't drink them. Yep, oh. solidarity, bro. Yeah, please, Matt. You're our favorite. We love you. It's true. Please. Yeah. Please. Have we had one since our live show in Raleigh? Yes, we have. Yeah. I can't remember what it is, but we totally have. We really have. I feel like it was our our season birthday party or it was our holiday party? Not okay. the holiday. Okay. The holiday was maybe recent. it was our birthday yeah. party. We need a Matt top 10 list. Matt, for Women's Month in March, so you've got some time, come up with some kind of like – you know, women themed top 10 choice is yours. I will leave it to you. You can choose what to honor straight white male D- let us know top 10, but we love you heart. You can't see this now, but I'm making the heart thing with my finger and my black nail polish that I put on. When we started this show. This is a lot darker than I thought it was guys. Yeah. It's miraculous. Is it dry already? I like you've been, you know, we've been gesticulating for an hour and a half, so. Oh, has it been that long? <laughs> well, we started an hour and a half ago, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, right? This It's gray in the bottle. It's gray and sparkly. Well, now the light. Well, it weird. matches. Looks yeah. to be this. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine Ooh. with it. I like it. All right. Uh, um, whew. Okay, so change.org. Make Michael an official broad. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, an email from Matt. Matt, Matt loves TV. Matt's what she said. Not, not, not top ten. Matt. So the uh, the sixth abroad, not the fifth abroad. <laughs> oh, we're starting to field ourselves a soccer team. Uh, <laughs> so Matt says, "Hey, broads, happy early Valentine's Day. Monday was also International Day of Women and Girls in Science. That's awesome." Broadology is probably not recognized, but I'm sure we will still salute the women in STEM field. Hell yes. We can be team <laughs> science for the week in honor of International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Yes. And I'd love to go on about how great Russian Doll is, but I'm sure Amanda and Shandy have done their best to do so while avoiding potential spoilers for Colleen. Negative. Yeah. You know, we're just, we're going to table it until we can have a, a robust conversation. Pick me, pick me. I forgot to ask, is Russian Doll about Melania? Yes. Okay. Just kidding. It's not. I know, I kept waiting for it to be, somehow be about Russian something, but. It's really yeah, it's refreshingly about. not political at all. Okay, uh, potential spoilers for Colleen. I'm sure you two will agree that RD is best enjoyed knowing very little going in. I would yes. very much agree with that. Mm-hmm. I'm also eight episodes into the new season of One Day at a Time, and I think I can safely say that this show would get broad approval. Despite what it looks like on the surface, it is an extremely thoughtful and compassionate show, and that hasn't faded a bit in the third season. Its ability to maintain tone going from the funny moments to the serious issues is commendable. Sorry I got this in so late. Eh, You're fine. I'm a bit under the weather under the weather and i had to crash talk to you later matt broad number six well matt sorry you're feeling under the weather hope you're feeling better soon i know i'm sorry matt yeah that's not fun and Um, eventually we'll get to one day at a time i feel like you've mentioned it at every season of this show (laughs) fair 
Is it on Netflix? It is on Netflix. Okay. The only thing I know about it is that, yeah, it's a remake and it has um, what's her face from Six Feet Under? Vanessa oh, uh, Machado? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember her name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and I love her, but that's all I know. And that Matt approves. So all right. if Matt likes it, it's probably good. Yeah, he hasn't really let us down. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. What, aren't you the sixth of broad? I mean, it's better than the seventh of broad. <laughs> I mean, people are right? vying for uh, a broad number, so. <laughs> I think there's more people that saw her signing Mike's petition than what did for net neutrality, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this really is ridiculous. Okay, so we got a thing from Fallon and it is about Pixar's new short film that makes a bold statement on toxic masculinity in the workplace. The film, it's a short film from Pixar called Pearl, P-U-R-L. We, I think we're going to talk about it next week because I want to be able to spend more time on it than we have right now. Um, and it would also be great. I'm sure everybody out here would appreciate if they knew what we were talking about. So I'm going to link to this article in the show notes and the article will have the youtube video uh, to it and if you get a minute and want to watch it over the next week um check it out and we will be sure to talk about it next week um yeah so stay tuned for that and thank you for sending this to us fallon because this is actually a really cool thing and I guess we're going to fin- – that said, we're going to finish this with a update from Andy. All right. So Andy writes in this week in Andy's virginity. Hey, broads. Another week of crickets. I did see Alice at a group movie night Marshall and Lily hosted, but nothing of note transpired. However, I was, of course, going to write in and wish Colleen and Alex happy belated birthdays. I hope you had a great weekend and that your family didn't bring up politics too much. And happy Valentine's Day. By the time the listeners hear this, it'll be the 15th. So fellow single people, we made it. Hashtag I'm with hers, Andy. Well, thank you, Andy. I appreciate that. And I'm sorry that you had a week of crickets, but there's always next week. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, I feel like February is kind of weird because people get all weird about Valentine's Day. So I feel like online dating during the month of February gets a little mm. dicey. Yeah. And you ever, I feel like, you know, getting like after the holidays, people always sort of are looking for that next thing to recapture that holiday, whatever. Not even joy. I just mean like, you know, that frenetic feeling of the holidays. And then, you know, you're looking for it with Valentine's Day and you're going to survive. I mean, you know. Yeah. Give it. Give it till March. It'll it'll pick back up. Yeah. We're doing our Valentine date with Zach this week. <laughs> so. Oh, that's sweet. Nice. Get a little special time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get a little special time. Anyways, uh, thank you, Andy. And we look forward to your next update. Okay, so for some housekeeping, got to mention our Instagram, <laughs> which is – we might have mentioned it one or two times before. We've got an Instagram. Three. We've got a Twitter, The Broadcast 3. Follow us. It's going to be super awesome. Thank you to the patrons, as always. If you'd like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash janejack. You go to janejack.com and click on the Become a Patron link on the right-hand side. And uh, we are changing up some of the special features for the Patreons this month. I'm going to update the website as soon as we kind of got it locked down. But we are going to be adding extra bonus content for all the things um and that's probably going to be because uh, we're kind of sometimes not great with the patrons choice stuff every month so what we're we're trying to do is add bonus content and have other things that you know could you know just be really fun so i've been pulling things aside for the last couple of weeks to have something jay has been doing it for the jane jack show i'm sure we'll do something for survivor i'm sure the ramble cast will have something so there'll be things you know going on so check that out or become a patron and you can hear some of the really fun stuff that does not make it and you've heard the bloopers this is different than the bloopers the bloopers are little snippets these are going to be our whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous. Yeah. No montage here. No montage. Mm-hmm. There will still be bloopers twice a year from the broadcast. That's still a thing that's going to happen. I promise. But we're going to try to do uh, 
the minimum monthly, if not maybe more, I don't know. Minimum monthly, though, just bonus content for the patrons at the $5 or more level or above. Um, of course, you can uh, merchandise and go to jandjack.com slash store. Get your team sinus. T- team sinus. Team sinus. <laughs> I mean, it's that time of year, guys. Team sinus all the way. It's very, like, <laughs> ironic and hipstery. Team sinus. Jacob, <laughs> can you make us a mug that says team sinus? Uh, team sinus to your... <laughs> Team Science Team Universe. Um, it's funny because my sister was using that mug this weekend when she was here, and I just kept thinking, like, you have no idea what this means. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because she finally got into podcasts within the last, like, month, and I don't think she has any interest in checking this out, which is okay. <laughs> but it would be really great if she did. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be. Go to jandjack.com slash Amazon if you'd like to shop through the Amazon affiliates link. Um, check out some of the other shows on the network, particularly we, we got the Rumblecast After Dark, Survivor, Jane Jack, Survivor with Jay, Jack, and Colleen is coming back. And check out the new show, which is um, the Jay and Jack show. Jay and Jack are back. They've got a lot of their old you know, formats and, and some of their old things. They've got some new segments. Um, this past week, they talked to Melissa and Nelly from Pottercast and Mischief, Manage, Mis- Mischief Management. Um, she's such an inspirational woman. She talks a lot, and our, our listeners will be interested in hearing it because she actually talks. I listened to her today. She talks a lot about the um, coming up as a uh, a entrepreneur and a female CEO um, with uh, being in business and the amount of men she sits around the table with in in not in her own company because her own company is very dedicated to inclusion but uh, and diversity but uh, just the amount of people that were fellow CEOs that called her things like you know hun or sweetie Mm. Where I won't spoil the rest of the story. So, but you know that they talk about Fantastic Beasts as well, um, and the Johnny Jet problem, um, uh, and and you know a lot of old school podcastery kind of things. If you listened back from like two thousand five, six, seven, eight, nine, the glory days of like the Lost Podcast and Pottercast. Uh, I think you will really enjoy it, and if you are a feminist, you will actually really enjoy it because Melissa is awesome she is like should be a leading voice for feminists everywhere so check that out um um oh 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 did you guys see the thing that was posted in the in the jane jack facebook page the last if you want to know your rapper name i think ed the creepy mailman posted it uh it's so you do lil with the last thing that you ate Mm -hmm. did you guys do that at all because mine was really funny (laughs) No, uh, no, I haven't done it. What was yours? Um, well, tonight mine would be Little Ritz. Nice, I like that. But mine would the, be a little peanut tonight. A little peanut. The mm-hmm. at the time that I first did it, it was a little egg whites. <laughs> <laughs> also pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> we know yeah. that was kind of funny. Um, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. What would yours be, Amanda? Mine would be. Little green tea Kit Kat. Little green tea Kit Kat. <laughs> oh, you like those? Those are gross. I like them. Well, you know who also really likes those? Mike, the person petitioning to be the seventh abroad. Oh, well then he and I will will have to talk about it. Oh, that was like the one thing I did during our time off that didn't involve watching something. I went to this cool um, like Japanese uh, food core grocery store uh, in Brooklyn and I bought all sorts of treats like the green tea Kit Kats. And they can't good. buy those in any store. Hmm. They're good though? Yeah, they're like they're like matcha flavored. It's kinda like if you go and you get like green tea ice cream at like a noodle shop. It, it's that kind of green tea flavor. Cool. It is polarizing. It's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. But I I like it. It's kind of like green tea ice cream. I don't like that either. Yeah. So if you don't like green tea ice cream, you won't like it. Cool. Well thank you for being honest about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is great podcasting i'm really i'm doing a great job here really? i'm really I'm ruling the day bonus content um yeah. well next week okay so the one thing i didn't get to before was jay and i have been seeing some broadway shows and after we saw miss saigon and, and the touring version please the touring version i made a <laughs> list of my top 10 broadway shows and i have to say it hasn't really changed a whole lot in the last 15 years. Hmm. 
I don't know. I added Hamilton to it, but that's just because, you know, it's only like four years old, three years old. But yeah. Amanda, I want you to start thinking. Be consistent. I want you to start thinking for next week. About Broadway shows? Yeah. Just some of your favorites. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. I've all, I'm totally going back to this. I'm not going to let it go. And I listen, I re-listened to the soundtracks for all of these. And yeah, they totally still hold up. <laughs> yeah. Now here, here does it have to be Broadway shows you have seen? No. Performed. No, okay. No, 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 no. And I have one of them on there, which I don't think ever made it to Broadway, but I'm putting it on there because it is one of my favorites. It's called The Last Five Years. I was going to say spoilers. This is The Last Five Years. Yes. <laughs> I love The Last Five Years. There I- is a concert production. Um coming off Broadway sometime this season. And I almost uh, no. reached out to you and Julia and like, be like, do you guys want to come to the city and come see her with me? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'll see if I can find where, where it was. I think it's like tickets hadn't even been released yet okay. because it was like that far yes. out. But I let never... me, I will see if I can find it. And okay. um, I will. I've never seen the movie, but I kind of want to now. It's a little, it's okay. It's okay. Little... That's what I've always thought was just okay. Yeah. And I love the play so much. Although now listening in retrospect, I'm kind of like, man, he really was a dick to Kathy. Um, oh yeah. Super. <laughs> yeah, super. Super dick to Kathy. But anyway, uh, I that's the soundtrack out of all 10 of them that I've re-listened to the most over the last two weeks that I've been making this list. <laughs> okay. All anyway, right. This is great podcasting as well. Sorry, Shandy. Um, <laughs> it's all good. No, uh, I've rediscovered my down that nerd goodness. hole. Yeah, like going down it real hard. Okay, can't do that. Um, okay. On that note, thank you to the patrons that contribute at a certain level, and that would be well, thank you to all of them. But a special thank you to Eckhart Rickner, Tack from Tokyo, Joanne with a plan, Maggie the Magnificent, and Ed the Creepy Letter Carrier. Thank you guys so much. Um. Does anybody else have anything on this fine, fine Tuesday night that we're recording? Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Everybody shook their head. That was that pause. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, sorry about the cat poop, Shandy. Cat poop happens mm-hmm. in and out of the litter box, apparently. Apparently. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. Amanda, enjoy the green tea stuff, That the yucky green tea stuff. <laughs> well, you know, to each his own. <laughs> All right. On that note, my name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Peace out. See ya. Bye.